and then when you woke up you realized it was Leah and then you had to work another seven years to get Rachel and now you got both of them and then it's a sibling rivalry between the rivalries. Ain't no sequel. The last season, Moadine. Ain't no getting through them gates without that blood on you. I can tell he ordering my steps. Cause when the world said no, the father still said yes. It feels like I can't even get past the first 30 chapters of rereading Genesis without finding some trends within our people. The reason why we are here today in this video was because specifically, and it snowballed from there, specifically is chapter 29 in Genesis, right? When Jacob met Rachel, okay? So before I explain in blatant terms, because I'm going to refer to the book here, it's just like I had to stop after chapter 30 for my morning study because it, it was just too much. I felt like I was watching or having stuff unfold in front of me, like in the show Paternity Court. It was given baby mama drama. It was given sibling rivalry and so forth and just I can't do it because I noticed a trend <laughs> specifically within Abraham's family tree you know especially with Isaac okay so here is the thing that I've noticed about the word when there's a certain lineage that needs to be expounded on that's when the all the begets and the begots come into play. So in a rough explanation, okay, because you're just going to have to read it for yourself to even believe me, right? There's Abraham and Sarah, which conceive Isaac. Isaac then goes on to meet Rebecca. And some and here's another point. It's something about them, it's something about them whales, but we're going to get into that too. They birth Esau and Jacob, and Jacob meets Rachel and Leah because they're sisters, and a, a whole thing <laughs> unravels with that. Okay, so let's you know see the commonalities within these one family but three subset of family, right? So I have my journal here that I've been writing notes because it's like another thing too and I'll mention this in another video that I have in mind that if you see the thou shall not do something you know that is God ordained to not to do pretty much there was a reason for it because as the father he's going to be in a realm where he guides right and wrong okay so instantly as soon as <laughs> as soon as i was reading this morning you know like specifically in genesis 29 again you're gonna have to read it on your own to get the gist of what i'm saying but pretty much in exodus 21 and 10 right it talks about the wives having equal treatment like you have to have the same raiment and you have to feed them in marriage rights right so i'm thinking and please tell me if i'm reaching when it comes to the marriage rights does that also mean equal love like you have to love the wives equally like i'm thinking in a, like an emotional sense but with Jacob loving Rachel more than Leah, because mind you, he worked seven years for Rachel. And then Laban was like, no, nah, I'm going to give Leah. Mind you, in my head, it's like, Jacob, you, you know what Leah looks like and you know what Rachel looks like. So how did you get deceived? And that's beyond my comprehension because it doesn't say why or how he got deceived. You know what I'm saying? There's just some things that are left unsaid. And my brain 
especially with this go around. Um, <laughs> I'm like, so you went in to Leah because she entered the tent, mind you, Laban, you know, did the whole accordances to be able to do that, did the whole ceremony with the woo. I call it a ceremony because it's like you, you give things or you a feast or whatever, right? So did the whole thing and then y'all went into the tent together and then when you woke up, you realized it was Leah and then you had to work another seven years to get Rachel and now you got both of them and then it's a sibling rivalry between the rivalries because they sisters, you know what I mean? And it's just like, this in today's society, especially in my community, that's been a thing. Dude thinking that he's slick with uh with sisters or best friends or whatever the case may have you, because to me, you know, best friends are considered sisters, you know, to me, you know, not by blood, but by you know, going through things with them and so forth. You know what I'm saying? So the dude thinking whatever it may have you, you know, I'm gonna have her and I'm gonna have her too, whatever the case may have you. But the missing link here is y'all do not treat women like wives. With the commonality of God always putting something into play and a guideline of what to do and what not to do, I think was an example due to Jacob loving Rachel more than Leah, right? Now, to Jacob, Rachel was more attractive to him than Leah. It didn't say Leah was, you know, unattractive or anything. It was just the emphasis on Rachel's appearance in which Jacob liked. Now, mind you, let's get into the well situation. If you remember, that's how Isaac met Rebecca. <laughs> because Isaac was sent on his way to seek a wife and so forth. And when he got to the destination in which he had to dwell for a little bit, he was told to go to a well, see which woman was going to be, you know, feeding the camels and offer to uh, water his camels and give him a drink and so forth. And when I tell you, I mentioned this in another video where... <laughs> Some of y'all need to start running like Rebecca. And just overall, just the family concept and the camaraderie and hospitality that people had when you came into the land that they are dwelling in as well. It's like, oh, do you know so-and-so? Yeah, we know him. Like, how is he? Is he well? He's good. Woo, 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 woo. Right? And then it's like, okay, yeah, come stay with me. You know what I'm saying? So with that, the commonality, Jacob, <laughs> with his flock and all of that, met Rachel because Rachel was a shepherdess, right? So that's how they met. The, it's something about the wells. Now, is that correlated to also the living water? Because, you know, the family started to develop after that and all the sons and birthing the sons of what ultimately will be the 12 tribes. Also too, what happened to uh, Dina? I need, I need to study more on that. But there was a daughter, <laughs> be, you know, between Jacob and Leah, and her name is um, Dina. So, I don't know. With the whole family tree of that, and the whole family drama, it's like, is this day of our lives? Like sands through the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. Is this a soap opera? Because I'm reading it and it's like, I don't think the first go around I could relate to it as I do now because it's like, literally nowadays, there's people that birth a child and then they get left. Or if they're still dealing with the man, the man um, births a child with another woman. And even so, a commonality between all of them is they use at one point or another, one of the females at least, especially with Leah and uh, Rachel. It was Rachel first and then Leah, but is through surrogacy. They use the 
maidservants that they had and said, okay, Jacob, use her so I can bear children on the knee through her, right? So the concept of surrogacy has been a thing since the beginning of time too. Now, mind you, modernly, no, they don't see it the same way or they don't practice it the same way. So it's kind of on the left-hand side. I'm not going to hold you because with all these other pra practices that people are doing and it's just not natural to the body, whatever, whatever. I'm not going to go into that. But with the lineage of that, with Jacob loving Rachel more than Leah, then Leah and Rachel started having a quarrel about themselves. And they're just like, well, I since I bore his child and I bore his second child and I bore his third child and oh wait I bore his fourth fifth and sixth child and what about it what about it sis you know what I mean and then Rachel was like okay I'm barren sure but go ahead and uh use uh Bala go ahead and use Bala so that way I can have children as well I can't conceive so what are we gonna do okay you can have her and she going to have my children, period. Because you're not going to be over here with Leah doing what you doing with Leah. And she got this over my head, like, because she already got on her third son. And she talking, she popping off and all of that, right? This is in my head. <laughs> because for me, I was that woman. Okay, I, I don't know if I'm barren or not, but in when I was in the world, I was that woman that was just like, wow, you chose the wrong female to have children with. I'm just being honest because that's how I felt at the time because for a woman such as myself in the caliber of woman as myself, I was in that spirit because it's just like, to me, it was like the quality of woman wasn't the same. So how could you do all of that with this person and then not with me type of thing? Because it was the total opposite. You know what I'm saying? It was like, eventually I was the, the winner, <laughs> if you will. And just with past stuff, it just, it wasn't in the cards, right? But now I don't feel that way anymore right the children are a blessing any child you know the anything that happened prior to me i cannot control all i can control is my emotions currently in a situation and go from there that's how i'm relating to these stories because it's literally like okay yeah you may have had the children like leo was popping off of rachel but in my case, I was the Rachel and it was just like, OK, but I have his complete undivided attention, you know, besides the kids, you know, because we are about active fathers over here. OK. But it's like with the whole children situation, well, at least I have his complete love when it comes to the man and the woman being in love. You know what I mean? I was like, well, at least I have that. Because sure, y'all didn't work out, but <laughs> we're going strong. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so bad. It's so bad, but I had to atone for that. I had to correct myself with that. And I just need to know that whatever extension is of him, it is of me. You know what I mean? I had to get into that mindset, right? It's petty. <laughs> With Genesis 29, the women was petty. Okay. And I'm not trying to take the words out of context. I'm just trying to make it relatable. So that way, if you do read it and you do get into the scriptures, that you'll be able to be like, oh, yeah, I see what she was talking about. There was a whole bunch of, a whole lot, a whole lot of with the, we got the sibling rivalry. We got the, the baby mama drama. And we got the difficulty with conceiving in the concept of surrogacy. Now, there's a lot of issues due to the way in which society has defiled so many things through food, through medication, 
through this and that, that is causing infertility for a lot of women, right? So they feel like they need to seek out other things in order to open their womb. And even so, correct way of surrogacy, if you will, a family can blossom even after this. Like when Jacob served his years, because he served seven years for Lee, he served seven years for Rachel, and then he served another seven years for the bond. Let me break down, you know, because this is, I only stopped at Genesis 30, so I'm only going to base it off of that, okay? So this is how the family came to be. Jacob saw Rachel at the well because she was approaching with the sheep and the flocks and so forth because she was a shepherd, okay? Cool beans. They, they meet up, they link up there. Cool beans. Let's start this work, Jacob says to Laban, right? So he can have her, okay? Then the whole debacle with Leah comes about another seven years. Then he finally gets Rachel by the womb, by the bean. Then it indicates that he loved Rachel more than Leah. And then the whole mess came about. And this is why people back then, not so much now, but people back then had six, seven, eight children because my mom is the youngest of six. And also my dad is the youngest. Okay. I'm the youngest of two. It's just something about the youngest. The oldest may have the birthright sometimes in some cases, but not all the time. But the youngest be the one that, you know, prevails. I'm just saying that's a commonality that's all in the Bible. That I can literally say in real life is true. Okay. Mind all that. Jacob with the children of Leah. It's Reuben, Simon, Levi, and Judah. And that was before she stopped conceiving. Okay. And then she used surrogacy. And that was through uh, Zilpah. I'm sorry if I don't get the names right. But with her, she bore Issachar and Zebulon, right? And then Rachel, who was originally the barren one to begin with, used Balah and bore Dan and Naphtali, okay? And then Leah, when she realized that she couldn't conceive, and she went the surrogate route as well, bore Gad and Asher, right? And then um, with the Leah, Dina, and then Rachel finally was, her womb was open and then bore Joseph. You know how people have juniors and so forth? Well, there's a difference between having a junior and seeing several names within the Bible because there are a lot of Josephs. <laughs> there are, there's a couple of Josephs, there's a couple of Johns and so forth, but it's a different timeline. So the first John that you see or the first Joseph that you see is not the same in Christ's time. You know what I mean? So don't get that confused because it's a totally different hundreds of years ago prior to that before you see you know a similar name okay so just keep that in mind and it it was so fascinating to me knowing these trends when especially when Abraham and Sarah were dwelling and traveling Abraham said to you know the people of the land and the kings or whatever it's like that's my sis you know what I mean like we share the same father but not the same mom type of thing and that may throw a lot of people off that may throw some people i'm not trying to deter anybody that's just what the scripture says and i'll pop it up here okay it's like and people you know in turn when they find out that that's not the case that it's indeed your wife they're just like why did you do this to me i i, I was i was i was finna get in you know what i'm saying no and then send them on their way peacefully but when i'm telling you like father like son or like father like grandpa abraham did that with sarah and isaac did that with rebecca I just said, that's my sis. And then again, the dude was just like, um, I was finna get down with the get down. I could tell the way you looking at her. 
What is not your sis? So it's like for this to be just in the first 30 chapters. Especially, okay, let's get into Esau and Jacob. Okay. Now, you have that one brother. Okay. That is just minding his business. Because he's the younger one. He chilling back. He observing. Because I was the younger sibling. So I was chilling back and I was observing. What did my parents like? What did my parents did not like? Okay. And then we got, you know, the older sibling. That's where I watched Shish Kabah. That's out there, you know, doing whatever they need to do. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And the younger one. It's just like, mm, I ain't nothing like that, right? God said that... Rebecca was going to have two nations in her womb. That's why you're having a struggle with your pregnancy. Another thing of difficulty. You're going to struggle because these twins, they're going to go at it. Okay? It's not going to be pretty. Okay? Jacob initially, and here's the thing that I'm not really understanding, and it's just, it's above me why it played out the way it played out. Okay, it's above me. I get it, but it's above me. Jacob said, <laughs> because, just because Esau was hungry, right? And mind you, God said to Rebecca that the older will serve the younger, right? So Esau was going to eventually serve Jacob, okay? So the first go about with this and how it unraveled, is Jacob noticed and Esau said that he was hungry. So Jacob was making some stew. Okay. All right, bro. You can have some. Here's the thing. Esau easily could have made his own plate. Esau could have literally hooked up what he had hunted for. The game that he, you know, came back with, he easily could have cooked it up for the family, who do who, whatever, or himself, right? Esau said, no, nah, give me that. Give me that stew, right? Jacob said, nah, mm -mm. what we're going to do is you're going to give me, you're you going to give me the birthright. That's what you're going to do. I know I'm the younger and that's on you, but you're going to give me the birthright and then I'll feed you this food. I'll give you the stew. Esau said, cool, bet, like. What is the birthright to me? I'm hungry. I'm gonna let y'all sit with that because I know for a fact somebody was like, dang. Like I didn't care what nobody was saying about nothing cause I was so dang on hungry. I was distracted. I did not care. Like, all I wanted was my plate, and I didn't even know what the person was saying. I know somebody know that. I know somebody know that feeling and can relate to that. And it could have been something important that somebody was telling you, but you were so preoccupied with getting food in your face. Okay? That's crazy. Like, that's what I'm saying. This thing is, this book is so relatable. That's what I'm saying. So, that was the first occurrence. Okay, then the second occurrence is when Isaac is a lot older to the point where he is going to eventually pass away due to old age. Okay, so he's not able to see. He's pretty much blind. And Esau is doing his thing with the hunting. He saw that he was going to bless him, you know, and to go out into the field, come back, cook food, and I will bless you. Right. So Rebecca heard that. Because God threw an angel, told her years ago, I don't know how many years ago, it doesn't say the timeline, but you could tell it's a different timeline because now Isaac is old. It says that, like, he's older in age now. So <laughs> Rebecca hears Isaac say that to Esau, and she like, hold up. And here's the thing that's above me. I don't know if she remembered what God said to her or if she felt like she took it upon herself because the scripture says Isaac loved Esau 
and Rebecca loved Jacob. So <laughs> this is another thing. There is a favorite child. That is a concept. And people are like, I love my children equally. Okay, some may feel that way, but others, there, there are some times where you have a favorite child and it just is what it is. You have a golden child. Anyway. <laughs> so relatable. So back to the story. Rebecca hears this. Given that Jacob is her favorite, she gonna be she came up with this plan. Everything is guided through God. We're just the vessels, right? So I don't know if she's, you know, using the spirit to come up with this plan for I don't know. But she literally said, You're smooth, my son. You ain't got no hair. He's all real hairy. Okay. Probably need to shave. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Use some fur. Go to your father since he's buying Casey. So say I'm Esau and get the blessing. So when that transpires, instant sibling rivalry. Esau on Jacob ass. It, he's on him. He is on him. And he's like, you ain't got a blessing for me, dad. I mean, Isaac, like, you ain't got a blessing for me. Like he literally deceived you. Like what that, what, again, what that got to do with me? He had that spirit. What that got to do with me when he, you know, exchanged the birthright to Jacob again, the first occurrence? What? That don't mean nothing to me. And then he turns around and be like, just because you got to see what does that got to do with me? Where is my blessing at? Because you told me this what it was. And then my brother yet again takes what's rightfully mine. So then Esau was on Jacob's neck. And now to this day, on oh, Jacob's neck. Leave us alone, twin. Leave us alone. Oh, oh, the clear distinction. Because again, there's descriptors. Jacob, he, he chilling, he dwelling. He on the problems. Esau out there hunting, doing, you know. It's just like, come. Calm down, Jacob. Like, sir, calm down. And you know, you know my people. Don't start none. Won't be none. Okay. So it's just. The <laughs> I was just reading this morning, and I, I, when it when it came with down to Leah and Rachel, and the sibling rivalry with that. That's how this whole thing and that whole trend of the sibling rivalry came into play with Leah and Rachel, Jacob and Esau. The fact how relatable this book is, it's literally a history book and it's like it replays in your head. For me personally, being the sibling that, you know, just chilling, chilling, I didn't, I, I stayed about the way, child. I'm a woman. I have a brother. Totally different lanes that we can go into, right? I love you, bro. I love you. I'm just saying. Society, like, you know, I was a sibling. Oh, you're so-and-so, sister. Oh, you, you so-and-so. Yeah. Like, he was the one, he was the one in the sports and the academics and the, and the this and the that. No. My brain is totally different. Like he, he's, you know, we're both about structure, but he has stuck with that structure. Like it's a linear thing and it's upward thing, right? Positive correlation, okay? It's the diagonal thing is up there, right? I'm more on the creative thing and realize that life, <laughs> people be, you know? So it, it blossomed for me into the creative space and the speaking space and the, being able to tap into certain realms that are relatable. So this is just another one of them. Also in this book too, you know how it's always that one sibling, <laughs> that one, the chosen seed to save the whole lineage with the knowledge and wisdom 
we both got degrees, okay? I'm just saying that when it comes to spiritual stuff, it fell on me. The wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of this book fell on me. So I took that responsibility just like I have in the world. I took on all the responsibilities that was placed on me, faced it, did it, did what I had to do and move forward, right? But now I'm doing it in a way scripturally and on the right hand side, right? If I didn't wake up to certain things, <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to, I, I don't know. I don't want to know. It explains the different descriptions that siblings have. And this book does it as well. That's all I'm saying. Especially when Abraham and Sarah bore Isaac. Like that's when the things introduced to the importance as to which and as to why he was going to be conceived and so forth because God placed on Abraham a promise that's why I wanted to bring this up. With this specific lineage, you could tell that there was some drama. There was some cattiness, there was some pettiness, there was some competition there. And it just, it unfolds until this day. That's how you know the difference between the regular folk and who is of the lineage of this people. Because truthfully, if you cannot relate to this, now mind you, Gentiles, they can go through this too you know, through, you know, certain avenues and so forth. I Because I just, I know personally, you know, Gentiles going through this as well. I'm just saying that the frequency in which it happens and the stereotype in which it's stamped on is my people, right? Just putting it out there. Wait for yourself. I don't think I could pick this back up until later afternoon because I, I need to calm down. <laughs> Just like, wow, Leah. You keep saying, since I gave you, you need to come into my tent. I gave you such and such sons and I named them this and boo. Leah, you know that one friend? It's just like, I got his kids. What do you got? I'm the first baby mom, the first wife. I'm the first one that he did. Oh, wah, 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 wah. Leah. Everybody know Leah. <laughs> Everybody know Rachel. Everybody know Isaac. Everybody knows Jacob. Everybody know Abraham. Everybody know Sarah. Everybody know LeBon. LeBon said, hey, come work with folk. Come be in the family business. Okay? Come do that for a little bit. You know? And you said you named your wages. And I got you. Okay? And then like, oh, dang. You know what? You should probably stick around. Okay? Stick around for a little bit more. And I promise you, I'm going to get you what you need. I got you. Right? And on top of that, being Jacob. Jacob being Jacob. He said, you know what? I'm going to stay for another seven years. Because now I got a big family to feed, fam. And on top of that, he switched it. Jacob switched it. Okay? He said, yeah. I'm going to take the, you know, the brown sheep, the spotless one, the streaked ones, and I'm going to call them mine. Right? And that he did a mechanism in which he created rods and so forth. Because at this point, Jacob was prosperous. He was real. He, he, he was the guy. He was him. He made a mechanism to the point where it switched to where his flock was the stronger one. And the bonds was became the feeble. Okay? I'll tell you in the next chapter, this is why I need to stop. This is why I need to stop reading until, because I can't. Jacob flees from the bomb. Because listen, I'm just I'm gonna say that. I'm gonna say this. It says now Jacob heard the words of Laban's son saying, Jacob has taken away all 
that was our father's and from what our father's he has acquired all this wealth and Jacob saw the countenance of Laban and indeed it was not favorable toward him as before this is literally in Genesis 31 verses 1 2 and then even 3 then the Lord, had, the Lord had to step in at three. He said, Then the Lord said to Jacob, Return to the land of your fathers and to your family, and I will be with you. Wrap it up, fam. Let's, let's go. Because it doesn't say Jacob intentionally made his flock prosperous and made Laban's feeble. It didn't say he intentionally did that. But the sons of Laban, he said, Yeah, Dad, he taking you for what you got, fam. What you going to do? And then Laban didn't like that. So Laban was like, mm. looking at Jacob sideways now. So now Jacob got to flee. And then this is another commonality. I'm, I'm probably going to do another video for that. You know how many times people had to flee from somebody because y'all had beef? You know what? Let me get out here because I can't. I can't. Okay. I need to pause. I need to pause. And I need to relax because this is too relatable. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. And until the next one, take care.